Okay, this next track, it gives me a couple things that I have to work with and keep my mind on that all drummers have to learn how to do. Uh, namely, speaking of working with click tracks. Uh, click tracks come from drum machines, and sometimes drum machines can intimidate the drummer when they have to keep time with this little box over here, as well as keeping time with the band over here. Uh, one of the tricks I've learned with working with drum machines and or click tracks is letting this little guy over here, this click, whoever's making this noise in this box, kind of pull us along. In other words, we don't try to play right on top of the click or we don't try to play ahead of the click. If you play ahead of the click, you're always gonna be trying to slow down and your track's gonna be feeling like that. Something's not gonna feel right in the track. The groove's not gonna be locked in. So like I'm saying, the trick is to stay right on the backside of it. Let this little guy pull you along. At the same time, you can just drive your groove and get the right feel if you let him stay in front of you. As Soon as you catch up to him, you're in trouble. Okay, so that's the trick on click tracks. Also in this song, I want you to listen to my bass drum attitude. And this is uh, good advice for just about any song you're playing. Your attitude on the bass drum has to be one of commitment. When you hit that bass drum, you've got to hit it. Uh, if you're recording, your engineer is going to love you if you've got a consistent uh, hit on that kick drum. He's going to watch that meter hit that same spot every time. So a consistent, bad, you-know-what attitude on that bass drum is what we need. Um, also, one more point here before I play on this song. The verse of this song is kind of long. It's kind of a long verse section. And in the middle, there's kind of a moment where, it, where the music changes a little bit. I've constructed it this way on purpose. So I want to see how long I can go without playing a drum fill. How long can you go? without playing a drum fill. Is it eight bars? It's not long enough. Is it 12 bars? Not quite long enough. If it's 16 bars, you're doing pretty good. If it's only four bars, you're in trouble. Um, a lot of us need to practice our groove without breaking that groove to play some kind of a drum fill. Most of the time, you don't even need the drum fill. So what I'm getting to is how long can you go before you have to play a drum fill? OK. So we're working with a click track in this one. And we're checking on our bass drum attitude and the groove during the verse section. Uh, let's do it.
Okay, that was another fun one. Um, that's also one of my favorite tracks. Uh, let me say something about what I did inside that song. I, after the section with all the drum fills, I came out of it with a buzz roll. A buzz roll is very important. It's just a real sophisticated or intense version of double stroke. So I suggest practicing your double strokes to get them up to the buzz roll point. Everybody should have a hot buzz roll in their bag of chops. Uh, another thing you saw me do, in the B section of the verse, I moved to my, the bell of my ride cymbal, and I was very careful not to overplay it. It's one of the parts of the drum set, and mainly the ride cymbal, that's easy to overplay. So I kind of lightened up on my touch on the bell during that section. Um, now, the center section of that tune had some drum fills in it. Uh, a lot of times uh, are, we're fortunate to have a song where we can play uh, some drum fills and show off a little bit. One of the problems we have with that is trying to let it all out at first, uh, trying to shoot the wad too soon, uh, trying to show all your chops in the first bar. Uh, my advice is take your time. You just play something nice here, then build it, and then build it some more, and, and let the whole section build. So by the time you get to it, you've crescendoed the whole section. Don't let it out of the bag too soon is what I'm saying. Take your time with it and relax, and you'll find yourself playing some real good stuff. Well, let's see. Let's move on to another track here, one that uh, is also a favorite of mine. It's called Let's Get Modern. One of the things about this song 